Good day, everyone. I'm Mr. Gerald Abramas, and in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about how to write a research paper, specifically an introduction to research. So, at the end of this particular video, you would be answering this question, whether you have what it takes to become a researcher. So, let's begin. I would like to begin this presentation by stating these agenda that we have in this video. Number one, for me to introduce research. Number two, for me to introduce the steps on how to write effectively, not just in research, but you could apply it on general essays. Number three, how to write a research title. And hopefully at the end of this video, you would be able to write your own research titles. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Now. Let us begin by defining a research. So according to Hampshire, research is a process of systematic inquiry. So therefore, it follows certain steps. That's why it's systematic. That entails collection of data. So this is the first step. You have to collect your data. You have to document critical information. You have to analyze and interpret what the data is about or the information that you have gathered according to suitable methodologies. Meaning to say, there are certain ways on how you would be able to, to conduct that research. So there are qualitative researches, there are quantitative researches using both, you would call that mixed methods, that are set by specific professional fields and academic disciplines. Okay? So now that you know the basic definition of a research, let's dig deeper. Why do you think it's necessary for us to conduct research or why do you think scientific researches exist? Number one, according to the source that I have gathered, it's a tool for building knowledge and facilitating learning. What do we mean by that? Out of research, we could identify answers with the problems that are existing in the society and that adds up okay to a box of knowledge that we have like for example assuming that uh, we have an empty glass then out of research we could slowly fill it in by information so that we could understand probably what a water is okay we would like that to know and to facilitate learning, it means that it would be easier for us to facilitate, to make it easier for people to understand certain phenomena, okay, or phenomena. And number two, research is a means to understand issues and increase public awareness. So remember, if we do not conduct research, for example, we would not know the causes of COVID-19, for example or we could not find cure or vaccines if we would not conduct research, okay? And increasing public awareness. If we will not conduct our research and present our research, publish our research, people would not know about certain things. Like, for example, because there is a numerous debate, and since April is a month where we celebrate um, conservation of our environment, a lot of people are trying to deny that climate change is real. So the best way for us to clarify that climate change is real is through conducting researches. And we have a lot of researches that have proven that climate change is real and now it becomes a climate crisis that everyone should be involved in solving it. Okay, next. Research allows us to disprove lies and support truths. So what do we mean by this one? So with a lot of the information that you can get in the internet, correct? Lack of fake news. So it's harder for us to identify which information is fact, is a factual information, and which is not factual or which is not true. Okay? Now, through research, we could possibly understand whether it is true or not. Like, for example, with the COVID-19 pandemic, so a lot of, um, if you could remember, the copper mask, we have that, right? So if we won't have a research about that, 
the effectiveness of a copper mask, a lot of people would still use that. Now, it has been proven that copper mask is not effective in filtering the COVID virus. Okay? Now, another benefit of research is it promotes a love of and confidence in reading, writing, analyzing, and sharing valuable information. This is very good right? benefit of a research because you know, like for example, like you as a student, you really need this. Okay? You need to be able to develop love and confidence in reading so that you could become better individuals, individuals who are able to comprehend what you are reading and able to distinguish a bad material from a good material, okay? That's one of the reasons why research is very, very important, okay? Next, apart from these benefits, I'm going to be asking you now, are you ready to know if you are fit to become a researcher? So let's start and let's try to know whether you are really fit to become a researcher. Now, a good researcher, of course, would mean you have to be good in writing, okay? So writing is very, very essential. That's the core of research, okay? Now, how can you write better research? These are the steps. You have to read a lot. Now, do you read every day? If the answer to that is no, um, probably you would be uh, struggling in doing your research. So you have to write every day as well. I know a lot of you would tend to get tired probably or get bored writing, but I hope that you would do this. Practice this, writing every day. Actually, as a teacher like me, I do it as well because I wanted to improve on this particular field, which is writing. So even if it's just like a small quotation, one-liner, it's okay. As long as you are writing something, you are developing, you are organizing your ideas, your thoughts, it's okay. Next, you have to brush up on grammar and style. So you really have to make sure that you are very good in grammar and you have a certain style. Why is that? Because poor grammar would lead to misinterpretation of your research. Okay, so if you're not good in this one, it could be, uh, it could lead to misleading the public, for example, who would read your research. Okay, that's why it's very important communication is very important and one of the aspects of a good communication is good grammar okay so they are always intertwined they are always connected next you have to conduct thoughtful research thoughtful research meaning to say uh, since internet is free you can access it you can access a lot of um, information from the internet you have to be very skillful in choosing what information are you going to use, what research are you going to use, okay? Or other materials, other reviews, literatures, studies as well. And of course, you have to check the credibility of the person, okay? So if you think um, probably it's not good, there are a lot of errors, it's very easy to spot whether um, that is a good source. So like, for example, if that source has a lot of grammar errors, definitely that's not a good source, okay? So you really have to, um, to know those things. Next, you have to develop a process. So writing has a process. So you could start with brainstorming, okay? Pre-writing. Next, uh, that's what I do in my students um, actually at the moment, okay? I ask them to do a draft. I ask them to brainstorm and, of course, to edit their own works, finalize their papers so that they would be aware of what's happening already in their paper. Okay, after that, you have to proofread, edit, and revise. This is the thing. Even professional writers would really commit mistakes, okay? That is not something that you could avoid entirely, okay? Even those who are really expert in that, Especially if you're already tired, your eyes are tired already, you could not avoid these from happening. That's why it's very important to proofread it, edit and revise, read it 
ten times would be better. Okay, because you could always spot uh, some mistakes there. So it's really really important to do these, uh, do this step. Okay, next, share your work and invite feedback. So do not be afraid if you would be receiving comments or feedback from other people which are not that good or not in favor of your paper because we learn from it and we grow from the feedback that we receive from our teachers, from our friends, from our classmates, from our family, from someone who is more knowledgeable than us. Okay, like for example, even I'm already a teacher, I still consult people about my work. Okay, I would still ask them, uh, what do you think about this? Is it good? Is it bad? Okay, and next, make writing your priority. If you really would like to excel in research and make this like something that you would really love, make it as a priority. Put it in your priority lists. Okay, it's just the same with finding a romantic relationship. It's of course should also be on top of your priorities if you would love to grow in this. Okay. Of course, this is very important, the last one. Set goals and pursue them. I know it's very hard to pursue your goals, right? Specifically, there are a lot of factors that could affect our goals, like unfavorable internet. Sometimes our group mates would not help us, or you have a lot of other things to do in other subjects. But I would love to tell you that these challenges would really allow us to grow and hopefully you you would, you would be able to um, embrace it okay so that you know it would be better okay and you would be better and you would be fulfilled once you were able to reach and pursue your goals okay next are you ready to know how to write your first research title so the first thing that of course very important is for you to get your topic, know your topic, and then make a title out of it. Now, I'm going to teach you how to do your title. So here, um, this is the characteristic, or these are the elements of a good title. Number one, your organism. Number two, your parameter. Number three, your variable. Okay? When we talk about organisms, these are students could be students, children, teachers, parents, administrators, and institutions. Take note of that. For the parameters or the limitations, it could be about proficiency, test score, reading comprehension, student emotions, professional development, learning outcome, attitudes, career, and advancement. Okay? Something that you could like to put a limit on your research. Okay? If you would like to talk about um, romantic relationships, that's it. If you would want to talk about uh, what else? Self-esteem, then it should just be about self-esteem. Okay? Something like that. Next, with the variable. Variable, example, print versus computer screen, schooling, family, poverty, classroom, goal structures, peer coaching strategy, disabilities, classroom environment, school transition, different institutions, gender, etc. Okay? So these are your variables. Now, I'm going to be giving you these general considerations for writing a good title. Number one, your introductory words are unnecessary. Some introductory words are unnecessary. Like for example, this one, preliminary, study, investigation. So do not put it in your title already. Like a study about gender discrimination. So don't put it anymore. Okay, if those are uh, unnecessary. Next, the location should be limited only to studies that need specific areas. So uh, some would say, for example, the the communication skills of junior high school students in BED of USI. Okay, so sometimes it's no longer necessary to put USI there, for example, or the location, unless there's something uh, unique about it. Okay? Unique place or unique institution. But normally, you could just drop them. Next, not non-standard acronyms and abbreviations should not be put in the title. What do you mean by non-standard? It means that there are abbreviations that are universally accepted. Okay, like for example, JHS, it means junior high school. SHS, senior high school. 
BEB, Basic Education Department. Okay? Non-standard abbreviations like, for example, like you could have SML. Like, what SML? Share mo lang, something like that. Okay? So, you really have to be very critical of that. Next, brand names should not be written in the title. So, brand names like, for example, um, if you would like to study about medicines and then you put there AstraZeneca, um, what? Brand names. You could put there... Mm, let's say AstraZeneca. So that's a brand, okay? Or what else? Moderna. So that's also a brand of a vaccine. Or Alaska, if you would like to compare Alaska versus their brand. So it's not ethical to put it there, okay? Next. This is an example, okay? Later on, when you do your research title, you have to identify these three first. Your organism. Like, for example, here, students, the parameter, the receptive skills, and then the variable, or the variable, rather, are e-games and linguistic intelligence. Okay, so this is the title, Effects of e-games and linguistic intelligence on students' receptive skills. Okay, so this is an example. Okay, now it's your time to make your own title so good luck and hopefully you would be able to come up with a good time okay thank you so much for listening and i'm going to be seeing you again on the other video i'm going to be talking about how to write an introduction okay bye bye